in a new war crime, Houthi rebels attack a school in Taiz with a ballistic missile and kill eight people. The U.S. State Department says Houthis are the real obstacle of making peace in Yemen. The U.S. Special Envoy Tim Linder King and Prime Minister Maeen Abdel Malik discuss latest developments of the conflict. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Rana Suena. Houthi ballistic missiles hit a school and killed eight civilians on the outskirts of Magbana district, west of Taiz. Locals said the Houthi missile struck said Zaid bin Jubair school and that the missile was launched from the camp adjacent to Taiz airport. They said the missile attack killed eight citizens while 17 others were injured, most of them seriously. The UN envoy Hans Grunberg said the ongoing military escalation in Yemen is deeply alarming. He called on all parties for restraint and de-escalation of violence. The UN envoy added that military options will not result in sustainable solutions, noting that all parties should cooperate with UN efforts to revive a political process aimed at reaching a just negotiated settlement to the conflict. The United States Department stated that Houthis' actions on the ground, including their offensive on Merib and their attacks on Saudi Arabia, have shown their intentions as they are an obstacle to finding solution to the conflict. Uh, certainly you have seen a pattern uh, at play where uh, the Houthis uh, have demonstrated uh, through their actions on the ground, including their offensive uh, against Marib, uh, through their continuing attacks uh, against uh, Saudi Arabia, including attacks uh, that have the potential to inflict uh, grievous harm on uh, civilians um, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, that um, at the current moment, they are the obstacle uh, to diplomacy. They are the obstacle uh, to finding a resolution uh, to this conflict. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said the United States is committed to bringing peace to Yemen and reinitiate peace talks, but Houthis are not interested. This is our goal to change that, uh, working with uh, our Saudi partners, working with um, uh, the Republic of Yemen government, uh, working with other partners uh, in the region, including Hans Grunberg and the UN, uh, to jumpstart uh, this diplomatic process, uh, to see to it if we can put in place uh, a ceasefire, to see to it if we can increase humanitarian access uh, to the people of Yemen. Because after all, uh, it's the people of Yemen uh, who are suffering the most and who are suffering the most primarily uh, from what we have seen uh, from the Houthis, from their ongoing offensives, uh, from their uh, unwillingness to allow sufficient flows of humanitarian aid um, into parts of the country uh, that continue today uh, to represent uh, and to entail the world's worst ongoing humanitarian catastrophe. To that end, Ned Price said the U.S. is not apologizing for taking Houthis out of foreign terrorist organizations' list, stressing that his country seeks to improve the lives and the welfare of the people of Yemen, who suffers from the worst humanitarian crisis. Uh, we don't make any apologies for seeking to improve the lives uh, and the welfare of the people of Yemen who are resident in a country that represents uh, the world's worst humanitarian catastrophe in terms of hunger, in terms of deprivation, uh, in terms of access to food, to water, to other uh, basic supplies and essential services. Yes. What we have done, rather than uh, enact a policy that in some ways was punitive against an entire people, uh, we instead have enacted targeted sanctions uh, against individual Houthi leaders holding those who are responsible for some of these actions Prime Minister Maeen Abdel Malik discussed with the U.S. Special Envoy to Yemen, Tim Linder King, latest developments in Yemen. During a phone call, the two parties stressed the need to find an urgent economic support package for the government to help it continue reforms, achieve economic stability and alleviate the suffering of citizens. For his part, the U.S. Envoy to Yemen welcomed the reforms implemented by the Yemeni government, which work for the temporary capital Aden despite all difficulties. Linder King expressed his country's condemnation of the Houthi continued military escalation in Merib, which contradicts the calls of the international community and the United Nations for moving towards peace. 
United Nations Humanitarian Coordinator in Yemen, David Gressley, emphasized the need to stop conflict in Yemen. He said the country is losing human capital that will have a lasting impact for generations to come. Gressley added that all parties must ensure political will is present to help develop and secure a viable future for the country. Houthi rebels said they fired several ballistic missiles and 25 armed drones into Saudi Arabia, targeting Aramco oil facilities in Jeddah and the defense ministry in Riyadh. A spokesman for the movement said its forces had fired six armed drones at Aramco's Jeddah complex and the King Fahd Air Base in Saudi's Ta'if region. He said military sites in Riyadh and the city's airport were also targeted. Houthi rebels are still using all tools in the war to reach their goal. They brainwash minds of people and send them to war fronts. More in the following reports. Houthi losses in different war fronts are huge. In recent months, the rebels held funerals for hundreds of its fighters, killed in the battles as fighting showed no signs of abating despite intense international diplomacy to end the conflict. The funerals took place amid fierce fighting in the gas-rich Marib, with warplanes from the coalition having intensified their bombing there, and in the capital Sana'a and other areas. Over the past 24 hours, the coalition said that it carried out 47 airstrikes against Houthi targets in Marib, destroying 34 military vehicles and killing around 280 Houthi elements. An honor guard carried the coffins of the militia's dead, draped with flags, flowers and photographs of them. Government forces, military, exchanged heavy artillery fire with Iran proxies in Marib as coalition warplanes flew overhead. Reportedly, most of the fighters buried in Sana'a were killed in Marib and others were killed in the west coast. Houthis have launched a year-long offensive to take Marib, which hosts Yemen's biggest gas fields. Marib is the last stronghold of the government and home to 3 million people, including nearly 1 million who fled other parts of Yemen. Due to Houthi aggression, the number of displaced people in camps in the province has risen nearly tenfold since September, with more than 45,000 people fleeing their homes as Houthi forces breast the offensive. The war in Yemen has killed tens of thousands and caused what the United Nations describes as the world's largest humanitarian crisis. UN-led efforts to bring about a ceasefire have stalled in a conflict that is seen largely as a proxy war. To the west coast of Yemen, where the joint forces discovered a new minefield planted by Houthis. The new minefield was discovered during uh, cl clearing operations in civilian houses in Jarrahi Directorate in Hodeida. The engineering teams said that this new minefield was planted on 700 square meters inside a village. Dozens of Houthi militants were killed or wounded by government forces south of Ma'arib governorate. A military source stated that clashes erupted between government forces and the rebels while coalition jets launched airstrikes in separate locations. As a result, seven combat vehicles and equipments were destroyed, while the artillery of the government damaged three crews, killing and wounding all those on board. To Al Dala, one person was killed and another wounded when an explosive device exploded in Qatoba district. Local sources said an explosive device was placed in a police vehicle while it was passing the main line. Recent escalation in Ta'id governorate by the rebels forced people out of their homes. Innocent Yemenis are moving from one place to another to flee from the Houthi shells and violence. More in the following report. Houthi targeting populated areas has become rebel stereotype approach. In recent crimes, the rebel shedding caused a massive wave of displacement from liberated villages west of Taiz. In order to escape the oppression of the Houthi militia and dozens of families are fleeing to the unknown. In response to their repeated losses, the Houthi militia are resorting to a policy of revenge against defenseless civilians through brutal shelling on safe areas and villages. According to the military media of the Joint Forces, the Houthi militia targeted homes of residents in the liberated villages west of Taiz, with dozens of mortar shells, causing a mass displacement of tens of families in the villages of El Hanaya and Ghubari districts. The displaced people in Magbana said that they fled their homes to Haiz and Sakm districts to escape the indiscriminate shelling of the Houthis, and they did not find any organizations or shelter, only random tents built by self-effort using old blankets, plastic cans, and damaged tires while some of them shaded trees and caves to escape the heat of the sun. 
Displaced people confirmed that they were subjected to the healthy indiscriminate bombardment, and some of them took human shields in the face of the advance of the joint forces, aimed at ending their suffering and protecting them from the militia's oppression. They were surprised by the rise in rents by more than 200% after moving to Heis, bringing the percentage of families unable to bear the burden of rents to more than 90%, and displaced children and women constitute 80%. Displaced Yemenis in the districts of Magbana, west of Taiz, appeal to international and local organizations to move quickly to save them from a humanitarian disaster and to pressure the militia to neutralize them, their homes and farms, and not take them as human shields. Innocent Yemenis keep moving between districts and cities in search of a safe place to protect them and their families from war and healthy violations. Whether the suffering of such people would have an end soon, that seems really hard to predict. Gunmen assassinated an educational official in a street in the city of Aden. Local sources said the gunman fired live bullets at the official while he was leaving his office in Khol Maksar area. Aden governorate witnessed a series of assassinations during the past five years targeting different officials and military leaders. Coming next. Central bank reshuffling, would it be the panacea to help an ailing economy? Welcome back. The Yemeni Tribes Forum concluded its proceedings in the Jordanian capital Amman. The forum called on all parties of the conflict for an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire, as well as opening all humanitarian routes in Yemen. More than 40 tribal chiefs called for releasing all detainees and to engage immediately with the UN envoy to form a solution to the crisis. The forum in addition stressed the importance of ending the monetary division and injecting all funds into the central bank. In addition, the Yemeni Tribal Forum called donors, friends and sister states to enhance economic and humanitarian support for Yemen. It urged the United Nations and the international community, especially the European Union, to enhance the role of the Yemeni tribes in containing the conflict. It also urged the sponsoring parties of the Riyadh and Stockholm agreements to implement them in order to stop bloodshed in the country. The EU welcomes the appointment of a new governor of the Central of ba Bank of Yemen. It said the step is essential to stabilize the currency. For his part, UK ambassador to Yemen welcomed the step. He said the appointment of a new governor to the Central Bank is an important part of the government's efforts to deliver reforms and economic stabilization. The Southern Transitional Council welcomed the decision of President Abdurabbu Mansour Hadi to reform the board of directors of the Central Bank of Yemen. The officials 
A spokesman of the council said in a statement that these decisions were made by consensus between the council and President Haiti, hoping that all difficulties will be overcome in order to achieve economic and living stability. The last decree to reform the central bank aims to end the co economic collapse in Yemen. The country awaits the outcomes of this decree in order to help this ailing economy recover. Yemeni president replaced the central bank governor and deputy governor amid an unprecedented collapse in the local currency. In a presidential decree, Ahmed bin Ahmed Ghalib al Ma'baqi has been appointed central bank governor and Mohammed Omar Banaja. His deputy, Mansour Abdul Karim Radih, was assigned as Under Secretary for Banking Supervision Sector at the Central Bank of Yemen. The presidential decree assigned the Central Organization for Control and Accountability to review and evaluate all the work of the Central Bank of Yemen since the date of its transfer to work from the temporary capital of Aden in September 2016 until the end of 2021. Hours after the decision to reshuffle the Central Bank leadership, foreign currencies fell against the Yemeni real, recording 1,357 over the US dollar and 360 for the Saudi rials. Government controlled areas witnessed a sharp deterioration in the value of its real currency, recording 1,700 to the dollar, an all time low. On the black market, according to traders and exchange offices, the central bank maintains an official rate of 530 rial to the dollar. The Chamber of Commerce met with many parties from the commercial and banking sector clarify its position on the current economic situation, calling on the government to work on providing hard currency to secure various commodities. We called upon the private sector, including traders and importers, to stand on the current deteriorating economic situation to avoid further collapse of life for all citizens. The meeting was held by the Chamber of Commerce to discuss current economic crisis and to seek solutions and find a mechanism of action that transcends the stifling crisis and sends a message to the president and the coalition to stand up to the current responsibilities. The central bank in Aden, which has access to international financial markets, has increasingly turned to printing new currency notes to cover the government's deficit and pay public sector wages especially those of security and military forces. This is the fifth time in five years to reshuffle administrative board of the central bank as the Yemeni government attempts to save the country from the economic crisis. The Ministry of Public Health launched the third round of the vaccination campaign against coronavirus. The Minister of Health noted that the number of doses given in the previous two rounds reached more than 600,000 doses. It added that vaccines given in Yemen haven't seen any serious complications. The National Committee Against Coronavirus announced nine new cases of the COVID-19 in three governorates. Committee officials said on Twitter that four cases were recorded in Aden, three in Hadramaut and two in Al-Dala. Also, six recovered cases were recorded. With the current updates, the total confirmed cases are 10,043, including 1,955 deaths and 6,923 cases of recovery. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. In a new war crime, Houthi rebels attack a school in Taiz with a ballistic missile and kill eight people. The U.S. State Department says Houthis are the real obstacle of making peace in Yemen. The U.S. Special Envoy Tim Linderking and Prime Minister Ma'in Abdul Malik discuss latest developments of the conflict. This is the end of the news. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.